Hi, I'm Luke and I'm a 15 handicap golfer. And today, I'm playing at a course that was on the DP World Tour in 2021. The course is Lopus and Melaneris in Gran Canaria. This is without doubt the toughest course I've played and both myself and Fence, who played with me, were looking to keep our scores under 100 given it was our first time playing a course like this. That's if I could convince him to stop playing Candy Crush anyway. It's a par 71 and we're playing off the yellows with a very nice couple from Sweden. So over to the first tee. Hole number one then is a par four with a slight dog leg to the right. Bunkers halfway up the fairway there, but obviously they're not in play with a tee shot like that. First tee nerves getting the better of me there. So now I'm looking to play this eight iron just up past the corner of the fairway. And again, I've not caught this particularly well, uh, but it still gives me a line into the green. Hitting seven iron. And I don't think I caught all of this one either. And this has left me short of the green. So I took a 60 wedge because I thought these greens would be quick. Oh, they don't stop. And I wasn't wrong. Just to give you a flavour of how quick they were, this is the chap we were playing with. This is Fence. Looks like a bit of a comedy sketch at the moment. So just trying to get this close. And actually, I nearly made it. Oh, I got it. <laughs> so, double bogey on the first. Not great, but not a disaster. Are you happy for out? The second, then, is another power four, this time with the dog leg to the left. And this time I hit a slightly better tee shot. Is that your driving wedge? It's high and not particularly long. Didn't see it land, did you? But it's left me with the three hybrid. I've tried to bend this round the corner. And it's just not happened, unfortunately. And it means I've ended up in the trees on the right-hand side here. I, I don't I just try and punch it back into the fairway. So there's a bit of a discussion as to what I should do. <laughs> I, I'd take the drop if I were you. And as Fence yeah, says, yeah. Yeah. the safe play was to take a drop, so that's what I've done. Leaving me a 9-iron into the green. All over it. Lovely. And this has gone oh, pretty well. <laughs> My name is Jeff. You can just about see this putt, thanks to Fence. Never really threatened the hole. And that's not great. So I eventually three putt and tidy up for a triple after a double. Five over through two isn't what I thought would happen. But we roll. The third then is a par three over water. I hit six iron here because it's 170 yards to the pin. And it just holds on. Which has left me chipping. I don't mind these shots, but judging the pace of these greens from these types of shots is really difficult. That's not horrendous though. Fence for his birdie then. Never really threatened, but he tidies up for par. Me for par. Ooh, didn't trust that right. Not quite. Oh. Not even quite for bogey. Oh, and it's another three putt. And my putting really getting in my head now. On to the fourth. Hence it's a good tee shot, plays his, his fade slash slice well. Straight in the centre of fairway. I pretty much copy what he did. I don't get as much fade as he does and I end up on the left hand side of the fairway there. This has left me hitting a three hybrid up towards the green. It's a par five this one. This one has faded a little bit though and again ends up in the trees. I do have a sort of window through to the green though and this five iron was actually really good. It just puts me up on the left hand side of the green here. 
Uh, so I can't really complain with that too much. Unfortunately, I still cannot judge the pace of these greens. That looked good, but I mean, it's 15, 12, 15 feet past. And relying on my putting from this sort of distance has been difficult. Thankfully, I managed to two put this one and get my first bogey of the day. The fifth then is a par three over water again. It's a nice hole, this one. And fence hits an absolute dart. Yeah, not bad. My turn. Oh, no. Mine's swimming. Oh, he tried his hardest. It nearly bounced out, but it's a reload. Taking no chances this time, and I absolutely hammer this one to the back of the green. And it just rolls off. Wow. Unfortunately, I got a little bit distracted with the view on this hole and forgot to film the chip onto the green. Um, but that's essentially my fifth shot. And then I get it in, finally, for a triple bogey. The sixth then is another dog leg left, par four. I cut this drive too fine and actually end up travelling through the trees though. And again, having to punch out. So I pick a little window and luckily I managed to execute that quite nicely. So this leaves me about 80 yards away chipping with a 56 degree wedge. That's good. And this goes pretty well. And it actually gives my first look at par. But it's not to be. The wait continues, but I'll take another bogey at this point. The seventh then is another par three. No water danger this time, just some bunkers. Fence doesn't catch how he likes, but he's on the green. My turn then. And mine's a little better. Probably pin high just to the right. So fence for birdie. Not bad. And he again cleans up for par. My turn for birdie. I never really had a look. Surely I can make par now. The absolute disgust on the playing partner's face there. Sums up my putting so far today. And I tap it in for another bogey. Hole well, 8 then is a fairly straight par 4. And I hit my best drive of the day so far. Straight down the middle, 220 yards. Giving me a chance of making the green in regulation. Unfortunately, this three hybrid shot just fades slightly and ends up in the rough on the right, just before the green. Yet another picturesque hole. So this has left me chipping with a 56 degree. And this looked good in the air. But they just don't grab on the greens, unfortunately. So it's run off the back. Chipping back towards it. I just can't pick a landing spot that puts me close to the pin at this point. But instead I actually make a putt. And manage to save the bogey. Hole 9 then is a fairly straightish par 5. 450 yards. I get lucky with this tee shot because it sort of bounces through the trees there on the left. And it's left me looking down the fairway. What I've chose to do here is lay up before like the little ditch that goes across the fairway. Oh, it's rolled a bit far. It rolled further than I thought it would, but it's left me with an 8 iron onto the green, which unfortunately I've thinned to the back right corner. This has left me a very tricky chip back down to the green. I didn't really carry it far enough, but it has trickled down to the centre of the green, so it could have been worse. On the green, not much more to say about it. I put for par then. Not terrible. Better than some puts I've hit so far, and I do manage to get the one coming back. So a little bit of a bogey trade to finish. At the halfway point, then I've shot fifty. 15 over par and I can definitely feel the difference in difficulty between a course like this and the ones I'm used to playing. My feel around the greens has completely deserted me, which is usually something I can lean on. 
However, I finish with a bit of a bogey train, so if I can keep the momentum heading in the right way, hopefully I can post a better score on the back nine than the front. Let's see how I get on. On to the back nine then, and the tenth is a fairly short and straight par four, but immediately on the right hand side is the car park. So this isn't water, it's not out of bounds. You're worried about putting a ball through a Tesla windscreen. Luckily I've kept this down the middle of the fairway and it's left me with a pitching wedge onto the green. However, I thought the wind was stronger than this and I've actually hit this too far and ended up at the back of the green. Cheers, Jeff. So putting towards the pin and I haven't judged that one too well and now I'm struggling for par and that narrowly misses. So it means even though I've played this hole really well, again I've had to settle for a bogey. I seem to be allergic to pars at the moment. Hole 11 is a big dog leg left, but I've completely balloon sliced this out to the right, as did fence, so we both headed that way to try and find our balls. Typically, his had clung on and mine had gone out of bounds. So I've had to take a drop and hit my third shot towards the green. Unfortunately, I had to take a seven iron, which wouldn't get there just to get over the trees. And then this has left me chipping onto the green from about 50 yards away, which again has come up short. So now I'm green side, chipping with a 50 wedge. And again, I've undercooked this one. And left myself with a lot of work to do to save the double. But I manage it this time. The 12th then is their signature par 3 along the coastline. It really is a spectacular hole. And fence again throwing darts on these par 3s. It's on the green. And hits yeah. a good shot. My turn then. 7 iron. I don't catch it. It's got too much of a draw. And it's ended up in that dip. We weren't sure where it ended up, but I'm a country mile really. And I don't get this next chip right either. So I ballooned that past the green, so now I'm chipping back down the hill, again with a 56 degree wedge, and trying to nestle this one up close if possible. Scared of hitting it past this time though, I don't actually catch it as well as I'd hoped to. So again, a little bit of an easier chip this time, chipping down towards the pin. And that's not terrible, I was hoping for closer. Our playing partner though had a chance at birdie. What a putt that is. <laughs> so me to tidy up for the double, hopefully. Not the same excitement for a double bogey, but I'll take that one. This stretch of holes on the course now is all down the coastline and they really are spectacular. The wind picking up though. Hole 13 is a straightish par 5, 525 yards. Again, I hit another good tee shot now, 230 yards down the fairway. I really want to make that elusive par, but unfortunately, I chunked my second shot, the six iron. I was trying to play this well, get past the bunkers, leave me a shot in, but now I'm chasing it with the three wood. And I hit it straight into the bunker on the right there. It bounces off the lip and comes left. So it has left me chipping on. And this isn't bad, I land it just before the green and it trickles on. Gives me a putt at par. A long one though. Not a bad effort. And leaves me again. Tidying up for yet another bogey. <laughs> hole 14 is a brilliant hole. You're looking at about a 150 yard carry here from the tee box over to the fairway. So it's really intimidating off the tee box. Fences looked good. He started it down the left, but unfortunately we lost that ball. I, however, hit my best shot of the day. It does end up in the bunker, but it's still the best drive I've hit all day. So it's left me about 90 yards from the green in the bunker. And I catch this just perfectly. And actually, 
keep the ball on the green. So a chance for birdie. And it looks to be a great line. I just didn't hit it. But surely I can make my par. Finally. And this is what I'm dealing with. On to 15 then. It's another par 3. We were advised to keep our balls right but short as right and long would be very difficult. Unfortunately, I've gone right and long, so now my chip down is almost impossible to keep this on the top tier of the green. And as you can see, the ball trickles down to the bottom tier there and leaves me a good distance from the pin. So a very tricky putt for par. Realistically, just trying to get this up on the top tier and near the pin, which is essentially what I managed to do. And then a horrible follow-up putt. Never even threatened the hole, and I have to tap in for a double bogey. It's a shame, that one. Hole 16, again, is over another forced carry. I get a little bit lucky with this because I catch it really badly off the heel. I then also catch my 56 wedge, this second shot, terribly off the toe. And with two terrible shots on a par 4, well, be lovely. they've actually yielded my best chance at birdie all day. Funny game, golf. But this one just turns at the last minute. And gives my easiest par chance of the day. Not even I can miss this one. And it means I get my second par of the day. Hole 17 then, yet another forced carry. And again I hit another perler of a drive. Nice little fade on this one and it's in play in the fairway. Can I follow that up? No. That is a very thin 5 iron. That's left me chipping now with a 56 for shot 3. I cut right underneath this one. So take 2. This one's better. So, trying to save the bogey. Again, not a bad line. Bad Just not great pace. Cheers, Jeff. Fence doing his best to block the camera angle. Oh. Shake that thing, miss. Can I, can I... Hole 18 then. Ooh, come join me. Fence thought I was in the trees with him. But actually, this, this drive turned out really nicely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I've braved the three wood. Not a bad connection, but it does go right and unfortunately ends up in the trees there on the right hand side. I do have a shot, however, it's not a comfortable one. But I play this really well. I try and keep this low. Luckily, it fades oh, a bit. So good. And it just lands up left side of the green. And then I hit one of my best greenside chips of the day to give me with a chance of making par on the last hole. And I do it. So a really good way to finish. Fence has also got a, a look at par here to finish. And he manages it. So we finish very well. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> and so I closed the back nine with a score of 46, meaning I did manage to play better on the back nine than the front. Although I found the course quite difficult, it was still one of the most enjoyable rounds of golf I've ever played, even if you didn't get to see much of it with Fence's backside in the way. Playing courses like this really tests your ability to adapt to different green speeds and conditions especially when you're used to playing greens as slow as we have them in the UK. It's a skill I feel is getting better though. As always golfers, let me know what you thought of the round in the comments below. Have any of you played on tour courses before? If so, which ones and what did you think? I'd be interested to know. 
If you'd like to watch more course vlogs like this one, I'll link the playlist on screen now. We also film a lot of matches between ourselves which are good fun and worth checking out. The next video is an 18 hole match between myself and Fence on the best par 3 course we've ever played. So make sure you've subscribed and hit the bell button so you don't miss that one. Thanks as always for watching golfers and I'll see you next time.